Today we're going to be answering an FRQ from 2004, question number three. From this FRQ, we are given the velocity function, which is 1 minus 10 inverse of E of t, and we're also given the position of the particle at t equals 0, which is y equals negative 1. So let's go ahead and write it down. So to answer the first question, we are supposed to find the acceleration of the particle at t is equal to 2. Now to find the acceleration at t equals 2, we know that the velocity function is the first derivative. And the acceleration is the second derivative. So to find the acceleration at time t is equal to 2, all we need to do is to use the calculator. and plug in the value of the given function, which is our velocity, 1 minus 10 inverse. Of e of t. So y sub 1 is our velocity function. So we can plug in the acceleration function at y sub 2 by using math 8 which is going to give us the derivative of our y sub 1, which is our acceleration. Second function window, set your independent to ask, and second function graph. So we have y sub 1 and y sub 2. So if we plug in the value of 2 in our calculator, it will give, give us the value of the acceleration, which is y sub 2, of our function at t is equal to 2. And this is how we will answer problem letter A. Now for problem letter B, we need to check if the speed of the particle is increasing or decreasing at time t is equal to 2. Now to answer letter B, it is connected to um, question letter A because we know that the particle is speeding up if the acceleration and the velocity are both positive or negative and it's decreasing or slowing down if the acceleration is positive and the velocity is negative and vice versa. So from here, we know that the acceleration at 2 is equal to negative 0 0.133 and the velocity at 2 from our our calculator which is given by y sub 1 is negative 0 0.436 and since acceleration is negative and velocity at 2 is also negative then the particle's speed is increasing at t is equal to 2. For part C, we need to find where the particle reaches its highest point based on the given function, which is our velocity. Now, to check for the highest point, we all we need to do is to find the critical number of our function. And to do that, since we are given the velocity function, let's just find the critical number of our velocity function by checking the graph of our v of t. And since our function is showing us a graph right here, let's um, use zoom fit and see where our function or how our function behaves.
And as you'll see, along the x-axis, we have a critical point between 0 and 1. And to find the value of that critical number, all we need to do is to push second function We have y is equal to 0 for the third, um, for y sub 3. And find the point of intersection of the x-axis and the graph of our velocity function. Second function trace, 5. And it's giving us 0.443. Now we need to compare it to uh, zero, and as you will see that at zero, um, it doesn't have a point of intersection. So we can say that the particle is at the highest at t is equal to 0.443 or at the critical number. Now for problem letter D, we need to find the position of the particle at time t is equal to 2. And the second part of the question is to see if the particle moving towards the origin or away from the origin at t is equal to 2. So let's go ahead and answer the first part by finding the position of the particle at t is equal to 2. And to find the position using the velocity function, all we need to do is to find g of 2 by plugging in the position of the function at t is equal to 0, which is given at y equals negative 1, and add it to the integral of our velocity function from 0 up until 2. And using our calculator, so negative 1, plus the integral, math 9, from 0 to 2 of y sub 1. It's giving us negative 1.361. So negative 1.361 will be our position for our particle at t is equal to now, to check whether the particle is moving towards the origin or away, the, away from the origin, we will just check the value of our velocity function. We know that the velocity function from our previous work is a negative function, which is negative, and our g of 2 is also less than 0 or negative, we can say 